Thank you very much. Um, the issue which I would like to address is the, uh, the current rapid retreat of sea ice and what some of the implications of that are for climate and for uh, the, the future of our planet. And um, here we are. Uh, we've all seen this picture. It's been re shown several times, I think, during this meeting. And it shows the most extreme summer retreat that's occurred so far in 2012. And we see the difference between that and the black line, which is the way the summer sea ice used to be. Now, um, to get a feel for that, uh, those of you who, who go up regularly up to the Arctic will be, have been aware of how rapidly conditions have changed. And so I'll, I'll show a then and now picture. And this was the first one here was 1970, August of 1970, my first summer in the Arctic. And this is the uh, Canadian ship Hudson. This is just north of Prudhoe Bay. In fact, it's trying to get round past Prudhoe Bay. And we see it's trying to handle very heavy multi-year ice flows, uh, really thick and quite challenging to an ice, even to an ice strengthened ship. Now this shows this August um, on the US icebreaker Healy and about 400 miles north of Prudhoe Bay and the, the ice that it's in is very, very weak, vulnerable and you only really have to sneeze at it and it will melt because it's really extremely thin and weak and we can see that it was on the verge of melting we're, the ice that remains in the summer now in the Arctic is first-year ice, and it's extremely thin and weak ice. So how do we know all this? Well, we have been going under the ice for quite a long time, and uh, the measurements of ice thickness in the Arctic and the ice thickness distribution really started in 1958 when the uh, Nautilus, the US submarine, went to the Arctic and got upward-looking sonar data al al along its track. And uh, the British programme, which I think could be described as a sort of distinctive British contribution to Arctic science, um, what started in 1971 with the uh, very uh, fine glaciologist Charles Swithinbank going on a British submarine. And uh, many of you will know him. He died very recently. Um, and then I took over the programme in 1976. And it continues and uh, with voyages at longer intervals than the US submarines, but US results and British results are put together. Um, we now have multi-beam sonar, which is, gives us this very beautiful views of the underside of sea ice and what it looks like. Um, putting the US and the British data together uh, and looking at the submarine, at uh, satellite data, we now have this very uh, frightening, rather, uh, rather frightening but impressive picture of how the volume of sea ice is decreasing. This is the volume in uh, the minimum period time, which is mid-September. And uh, the volume, this is real data, and it's obtained by multiplying the area of the ice, which is measured very accurately from, from satellites and has been for many, many decades. Uh, multiplying that by the thickness, mean thickness, which is inferred from all the US and British submarine data uh, interpolated. So when that is put together, we get this curve, which uh, again is, is based purely on the data, no model here, this isn't data, and it's showing uh, a decrease in summer which is quite precipitate, it's accelerating downwards, and there doesn't seem to be, although there was a slight recovery last year, this year, uh, it, there doesn't seem to be anything to stop it from going down to zero. So we can expect summer sea ice uh, to, to disappear very soon, and this is much sooner than is envisaged in many models, which show that the models are not taking account of data, uh, and also sooner than envisaged by the current IPCC assessment, possibly within the next two, three, four years. By 2020, would, we would expect um, the summer sea ice to have disappeared. And summer means September, but the other months follow on behind. And this is a representation of, of what the data show for the area uh, or the volume of sea ice in different months of the year. So it's been called the, the Arctic death spiral by Mark Cerez at, in Boulder because it's showing the, the, the volume uh, spiraling in towards the center line. And, and it means that 
not only will the September sea ice disappear, but not many years afterwards, the neighboring months will also become ice free. That's July, August, uh, Oct and October. It will take much longer for the winter sea ice to, 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 to vanish, of course, but it's t shrinking. What does that mean? Um, firstly, there's a reduction in the global albedo when the sea ice disappears, and this is a, um, an estimate that's in, in a paper that was published by colleagues at Scripps earlier this year, uh, which is that the, the, ch the reduction in albedo caused by this opening up of the Ar Arctic is causing, uh, is equivalent to adding about a quarter to the greenhouse gas emissions, that the, the heating effect of that is like increasing our emissions by a quarter. Um, a second effect feedback is the snow line retreat. And the, re the retreat there is very great in spring and mi early midsummer when the insulation is very high. And in fact, we find that the anomaly of uh, snow line area in the northern hemisphere is reach six million square kilometers, which is as great or greater than the, the reduction in sea ice area. And of course, we, you remove snow, it's having, it's having the same effect on albedo as removing ice. The second thing which we've, uh, many people have gone into at this meeting has been the fact that the warmer air masses over the Arctic cause faster melting of the Greenland ice sheet, and that's causing the Greenland ice sheet to lose mass in, at an accelerating rate. And that means that our predictions about sea level rise this century are being constantly revised upwards. The IPCC W, uh, fifth assessment, revise them upwards relative to the fourth, but a lot of glaciologists would like to see them revised upwards a lot more because of this retreat from, uh, the, from Greenland and from the Antarctic. But perhaps the greatest immediate threat is the fact that as the sea ice retreats in summer, this opens up uh, large areas of continental shelf which then warm, are able to warm up because of the insulation uh, and the fact that the water is shallow. So we now see these big temperature anomalies in summer in, in the, around the shelves of the Arctic. And the most shallow shelf of all is the East Siberian shelf, where a lot of field work has been done in the last few years uh, observing methane plumes being emitted. And this is thought to be due to the fact that offshore permafrost in that area is now thawing because of the warmer uh, water temperatures in summer, this is releasing methane hydrates as methane gas, and this shows uh, some results from Shakova and Semiletov, which is showing methane plumes uh, rising and coming up to the surface and being emitted, uh, because it's not true to say that, that methane, which has been observed being emitted from the Arctic, is not get, getting into the atmosphere. It, it doesn't get into the atmosphere when it's released from deep water because it dissolves on the way up. But when it's released at only 50 to 70 meters, uh, it doesn't have time to dissolve and it comes out into the atmosphere. And this is a very big climatic threat. Uh, so this is what it looks like. And we, we did an analysis, uh, some colleagues did an analysis of this uh, at uh, using the pages model, which is the model used by the Stern Review, the UK government uh, estimate of costs of climate change. And this is an integrated assessment model. And they came to the conclusion that if, if, there's, if there's a large methane outbreak due to this phenomenon, uh, then it could cause uh, a large amount of warming in a short time. So the estimate there is this, uh, not, not easy to see, but the center line there show the blue is our present IPCC predictions of warming in the next 80 years. And the red is, the, is what would happen if there were a 50 gigaton methane outbreak, um, which is about a 0.6 of a degree increase, plus very, very high costs, because that model was actually an economic model, the, the Pages model, and it came to some very large figure like $60 trillion as the, the extra cost to the planet over a century of, of uh, methane emissions due to retreat of sea ice. So, uh, retreat of sea ice may have econ economic opportunities for the world, but the costs are going to be very much greater because of the impact of the climate change, uh, resulting climate change on the planet as a whole. Thank you. Thank you very much.